Okay, so I'm going to present to you guys tonight um, about the 1099 Academy and taxis. Anybody running for city council should know about the taxi industry. Anybody living in San Diego should know about the taxi industry. It is a publicly owned industry. Um, so I'll just get into it. Um, first, I want to explain, because before we talk about Uber and Lyft and ride shares, we have to understand how the taxi industry works, especially locally. So I'm going to go over real quick a little bit of Taxi 101 for you that we came up with a while ago because it's a, it's a complicated is issue. So we distilled it down to this, our Taxi 101. But basically, the city of San Diego, they own the taxi permit. That means that me and you own the taxi permit. They are public property. Um, originally, they go for $3,000. Um, and the city uses, uh, which is very rare, but the city contracts out with the Metropolitan Transit System, with MTS who governs the, MT, um, the by, by the MTS board. The MTS board is made up by representatives from each city. So the city of San Diego has a majority of the medallions, so we have four representatives from the cities, but the other representatives are from El Cajon, Imperial Beach, Santee, Poway, um, and they oversee the taxi industry, as well as a taxi advisory committee, which we'll talk, talk a little bit more about later. And then you have the permit holders who get these permits from the city of San Diego. There's only 6% of them drive. Um, their caps. So, and 69% of them have multiple of these permits. And we'll we'll talk a little bit more about how these permits are used in an underground black market. And then you have lease drivers. They're independent contractors, just like Uber and Lyft drivers. Um, and they actually pay to lease their taxis. So they pay to work. Um, they work. They pay to anywhere between 450 to 900 dollars a week to lease their caps. 89% um, do not have their own permits. Um, and then you have the taxi riders in the public, right? So they're affected by quality of service and safety. Uh, a majority of people who ride in taxis are seniors, people with disabilities, low-income residents, and they actually account for a much higher share of taxi trips than the share of their population. Um, for example, I don't know if anybody remembers the Stingray accident that was downtown. When a taxi ran into a group of people at the club, that taxi driver was on a 16-hour shift. A woman almost lost her leg. He fell asleep behind the wheel. Um, so you can see how the, the general public is affected, very much real, um, by the taxi industry. Okay, so basically that's the scheme of the taxi industry. Um, just real quick about United Taxi Workers. Uh, United Taxi Workers started in 2009. This is our drivers. They went on strike, a mass protest. Over 300 of them went on strike downtown. Um, and then they formed United Taxi Workers. This is a picture of our drivers at MTS. They have duct tape over their mouths. Um, signifying the fact that they don't have a voice in the industry. Um, it's one of the, the biggest protests that's ever happened um, amongst these drivers. So, and this is just some pictures of our team. That's Mikkel in the corner when he voted him for himself on the City Heights Town Council. Um, these are our drivers, um, you know, at, at City Hall. This is them after sitting for four hours during a council meeting. And this this is them when they went to go lift the, the cap. But we have gone out, we educate the public, we meet with elected officials and communities. Um, we attend hearings and meetings, um, all this to improve the taxi industry and our drivers' lives. Um, let's see. So for the past five years, um, we have advocated for relief, uh, receipts for lease payments. Like I mentioned, drivers pay 450 to $900 a week in leases, and they never even get receipts for them. It's all cash underneath the table. They can't write checks. They can't pay with credit cards. It's all cash. And up till recently, they weren't even allowed to get receipts. Um, increased restroom access. Drivers are not allowed to move more than 12 feet away from their cars. So if they have to use the restroom, they get ticketed for it, um, which is just inhumane. Um, we have uh, fought to try to lease the, uh, put caps on the leases. We uh, try to fought, fight for retaliation protection. Our president, who just left, he actually got blacklisted the day after he spoke out at a public hearing. Um, our other organizer, Bebe, got blacklisted and retaliated for speaking out too. Since they're not, they're independent contractors, they're not employees, we don't call it getting fired, we call it take your key away. They can take your key away from speaking out um, about anything. Um, customer service training, um, because that's not being currently done, as you can imagine in the taxi industry, you can just collect your money, you don't care how the customer service is. Um, vehicle age limit, right now there's cars out there, cabs out there with over 600,000 miles. Uh, Mikel had a car that was 620,000 miles. Um, yeah, so this, the airport has vehicle age limits. The city does not. Um, we just passed that um, when we had a fight tooth and nail for it. Um, cameras and taxi cabs, we fought for that after two of our drivers were shot and killed within a month. 
Our drivers get beat up on a regular basis and they're afraid to report it to police. Um, so the cameras are still not inside the cabs, but we're still fighting for it. Um, innovation, drivers have talked about apps for a very long time. I think they're, you know, they're the innovators, not Uber, but we'll talk about that later. Um, equal driver representation on the tag that goes underneath MTS, where actually before there were nine permit holders and one driver on the tag, we were able to equalize that. So five owners and then five lease drivers on the tag, which is amazing. Um, and then an, under, an end to the underground economy, which was our, our dream um, policy, and then lifting the cap on taxi permits and more. So just a little bit more about industry statistics. Like I said, 89% of drivers do not have their own permit. Um, and a little bit about lease drivers, 94% of drivers in, in San Diego are immigrants. And this is true throughout our country. A majority of drivers, if you'll get in a cab, you'll, you'll meet drivers from all around the world. Um, primarily in San Diego. Um, this is from a Union Tribune article. Um, a majority of taxi drivers in San Diego are Somali refugees. Um, so a little bit more about their demographics. 65% um, are East African, 15 from the Middle Six percent from other Africans, so that's seventy-one percent. A huge majority of the taxi drivers in San Diego are African refugees, um, who majority of them live here in this neighborhood of City Heights. Um, so if you if you ever drive around City Heights, you're going to see taxis lined up and down the streets in front of apartment buildings and schools and, and grocery stores. Um, right now, we're we're fixing the industry. Taxi drivers make on average, and this is again from the CPI. SDSU study make on average 4.45 an hour. Um, that's including tips, um, and they work 12, um, sometimes 16-hour days. We've had drivers who have worked, been out on the street for 24 hours. We know a driver after a 24-hour uh, shift, he had a stroke and he went into a coma. Um, so they have to actually drivers have to work 70 hours um, a, a week to earn what a minimum wage work, um, worker earns in 40 hours. So over 30 hours. Um, and then what I was talking about before is that MTS charges 3000 for those permits and what was happened is that they, they put a cap on the amount of permits that can go out there so it created this artificial black market. And so our, our public permits were then being sold for upwards of 140000 actually at its peak $150,000, um, 45 times their original cost. And again, because of this, this scheme, then uh, people would take out loans and then it all comes back on the driver which makes their, their lease payments go up because they, they have to pay these ridiculous amounts for these taxi permits. So um, when we did this, this is a part of a presentation we did for city council, we figured that lifting the cap, drivers just not spending on their leases, they're gonna be saving a minimum of $9,484, which is well above what the current minimum wage um, proposal is in front of the city council. We also found through extensive research um, that by lifting the cap on taxi permits, it's gonna increase service because you know, we, we hear obviously a lot about service um, in the taxi industry from drivers who are working 12 to 16 hour shifts, um, and it's going to decrease the price. San Diego has the second highest cab uh, meter in the country, next to Honolulu, um, Hawaii. Um, and we also, it has also shown to promote innovation. Right now, because drivers are lease drivers, they don't have any room to be able to innovate. They can't choose what car they ride, um, what dispatch they use, pretty much anything. They don't have any control over their, their own business, yet they're called independent contractors. Um, so I just want to show you guys this short uh, three-minute video. Lift the cap on permits for cab drivers. Allow them to stop being employees. Allow them to start being their own boss. And we've been working and fighting and trying to get get our own permit. Last five years, we start in uh, winter 2009. Until today, you see we're here. We are really waiting to get the answer, and we're never gonna give up. And we we believe in we get what we wanted today, and we will.
urge you to use your power to stop the black market and lift the caps for the uh, uh, permits. Lifting the cap is, is freedom. Uh, you know, I, I have the choice to do whatever I want, you know, choose my hours, you know, because I'm the one behind the wheel. And uh, so it's just mean the freedom for us, you know. The reason we're, we're looking for this jazz is everything I got, it will be mine. I bought my bucket, I give my children. I believe that the, if the city lifts the permit, we will be, you know, financially almost, uh, you know, free. We can't be sick. So every morning when you wake up, even if you are sick, you have to go work. Right now, you know, we do work a lot of hours, and and every money that we we make, you know, we spend, you know, uh, the lease and the gas. Because uh, you know, sometimes you don't make money. And the owner will ask you, hey, give my keys. And uh, you know, you have to have a bills, you gotta pay bills, and you do a lot of stuff. And uh, once you don't make money, the owner will take the cab and uh, he'll kick you out for no reason. It's no unemployment, it's just outdoor, you know, he'll kick you out from the outdoor. Well, to me, it's really uh, uh, um, uh, it's opportunity for, for, for us as a driver. And uh, this is really exciting for me, and uh, and uh, I hope that they will uh, uh, lift the, the cab. The reason we want to open cab is, for example, I'm a cab driver. I, I I work every day, 12 hour shift, seven days a week, 365 days a year. We have to re reunite and together, and uh, and uh, they fight for our right, and we fight for our right also. And uh, that's why we organize and we've been uh, membership with the uh, 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 UTWSD. The better we you know we organize, you know, ourselves, you know, the better we, you know, change, you know, our condition, and uh, also the better we do, you know, better service in the community. We're asking you today, permits are not to serve, they're here to serve, they're not to sell. Please vote yes, lift the cap and opportunity for our drivers, and I just want to thank you all for coming out today. Um, you guys are the reason that we fight. Thank you so much. You deserve to be owner-operators. Please lift the cap on taxi permits in the city of San Diego. Thank you. When you have the will and the courage, and what you are trying to achieve is the right thing, then everything is doable. There's no room for any owner to pay lease anymore. So please consider this and give a chance to the drivers to raise their children, to raise their family and live like people. We have a motion by Councilmember Emerald. It was seconded by Councilmember Sherman. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 All those opposed, say nay. Nay. That passes eight to one uh, with District 6 opposed. Kevin Faulkner signed a resolution today to lift the cap on the number of taxi permits issued in the city. The proposal was passed by the city council last week. Supporters say doing away with the cap will allow drivers who work for taxi companies to get their own permits. That way, they'll be able to keep more of what they earn.
Companies like Uber and Lyft basically use the failings of the taxi industry to sell their product. Uh, the CEO of, of Lyft, uh, I mean of Uber, said the opponent is the taxi cartel, and they have created a situation where there's a monopoly in cities, which is true, uh, which causes a problem to create jobs. Drivers get stuck and have no other option to make money. And at first, we welcomed Uber because we wanted drivers to have that option. And but we do not believe that ride shares are the answer. Uh, we believe lifting the cap and deregulating our publicly owned taxi industry is. And the reason for that is this. The CEO of Uber also said the reason Uber could be expensive is because you're not just paying for the car, you're paying for the other dude in the car. When there's no other dude in the car, the cost of taking an Uber anywhere becomes cheaper. They want to have driverless cars, which you know I just read is not going to just affect the taxi industry, the trucking industry, the shuttle industry. It will put over 10 million people out of work. So. Uh, it's not just about disrupting the taxi industry. Um, it's about them building an industry on the back of immigrant workers um, that they end up wanting to outsource. Um, so what is the 1099 really about? First, I think we have to talk about what is a worker. And the IRS has this 20-factor test, which I won't read to you all, but I encourage you to look it up. But some of the things, does the worker have a schedule to be set by the company? Does the company require that the worker wears a uniform, receive job training, use tools provided by the company? And if you've ever ridden Uber, you probably know there's a pretty uniform standard to the way that Uber operates, right? It's a black car, the drivers drive nice, they have a, a water in the car, things like that. They can't receive cash tips, they can only take credit cards, things like that. So the question is, um, why are these companies, big companies doing it? So the benefit, big benefits of opting out for the 1099 contractors, which both taxi drivers, Uber drivers, and Lyft drivers, and more companies, uh, all of them are increasingly uh, eroding our middle class by, by deeming workers independent contractors is because it lowers costs. So basically, if you deem somebody uh, independent contractor, you only have to pay them for, um, you don't have to pay them for their time. Um, you don't have to give them health benefits, unemployment, uh, workers' compensation, retirement. Uh, they're not allowed, this is a big one, they're not allowed to form a union and collectivize and, and collectively bargain. So it's it, within these companies' interests and the tech companies' interests to make them independent contractors, 1099 workers. Um, so while Uber is estimated to be an over $40 billion company, they only have 850 employees. But they have, and I think this number is larger now, um, over 163,000 uh, drivers who they are quote unquote partners. And I put partners in quotes because Uber partners are not allowed to uh, decide how much their rates are going to be. I think Uber is under a dollar right now. Um, Uber has also introduced Uber X, so they actually have their Uber drivers competing with their Uber X drivers. Um, and they can get their app shut off for any, any many of reasons. So they're not really partners because they have no control over a multi-billion dollar company, which they actually have to pay 30% of every ride to. Um, so, but in comparison, General Motors is worth around 60 billion and they have 200,000 employees compared to Uber's 850 employees. Um, so you can see how much big of, of a profit margin that would be for Uber as opposed to uh, General uh, Motors. So, and also another interesting fact is state and federal governments lose billions of revenues annually as a result of uh, worker misclassification. And these are just some of the other ones. Um, Homejoy, uh, which is you know uh, Uber of domestic workers and Task Rabbit, same exact thing. Airbnb, which is gentrifying our cities by renting out uh, people's houses, actually kicking them out of their houses so that they can rent them. Um, Spoon Rocket is, um, and DoorDash is, um, and Postmates, they're all delivery. All of these workers are, um, are independent contractors, are 1099 uh, classified workers, even though they are doing, the company is making money off of their product, which is their work. And it's not just service industry, they also have UpCouncil, which is now for the Uber for lawyers and health app, um, TAP, which is for, you know, medical professionals who want to you know, become independent contractor freelancers. Um, so basically what it's doing is it's eroding full-time employed positions that we need, to, that people need to survive. And what they're calling it is the gig economy, the gray economy. And even recently, Hillary Clinton um, said many Americans are making extra money renting out a spare room or even driving their own car. This on-demand or so-called gig economy is creating exciting opportunities and unleashing innovation. But it's also raising hard questions about workplace protections and what a good job will look like in the future. And my personal hero, um, Robert Reich, um, in his, one of his articles called America is Winning the Race to the Bottom, 
that the rise of independent contractors is the most significant legal trend in the American workforce, contributing directly to low pay, irregular hours, and job insecurity. What makes them independent contractors is mainly the companies they work for um, say they are. So those companies don't have to pick up the cost of having full-time employees. So some of the solutions, and this is actually from Robert Wright, is that any corporation that accounts for at least 80% or more of the pay someone gets, or receives from that worker at least 20% of his or her earnings, should be presumed to be that person's employer. Um, again, Uber gets 80%. I mean, 30% of each ride that they take, and the same is, is, is for the other ones. So, and then some, um, and my friend Sam is here from Bike San Diego, and she can probably, and afterwards we can talk about too, about more um, options for the transportation industry. Yes, we need rides that are more convenient, and yes, we need rides that are cheaper, but is this the, is this the answer, right? Or, or is the 1099 economy and mega corporations like Uber, the, the the um, answer to our transportation issues, right? So some of the some of the solutions that we have here, and this is actually from Mayor Bill de Blasio um, and, and some others, uh, level the playing field. We want to lift the cap on taxi permits in every city. There is a taxi mafia in almost every, and we call them the mafia because they are, they're a cartel. New York taxi um, permits, which used to be public private property or not privatized, um, uh, Bloomberg called it one of the biggest ripoffs of the public ever. They're going for over a million dollars in New York, right? Public property, over a million dollars. And then again, it, it comes down to those drivers who are driving those cars, right? In the high lease places. So we think that level the playing field, lift the cap on taxi permits. Um, it's just archaic um, taking public property and it's uh, and, and then making it inflated like that. We have to protect workers. We have to ensure basic standards so people who work hard in the sector can earn a different, decent living. It's like Wild West out there. They have people competing with, for scraps is basically what they're competing for out there. Um, we have to protect riders from protect, protect, uh, predatory surge pricing, which I'm sure you all are aware of, which Uber does. Um, improve accessibility um, and discrimination in the transportation industry. Right now, Uber is not um, they're not under any kind of compliance to pick up with people with disabilities. Um, they, anybody who has either seen iDog or a wheelchair, they don't have to pick them up. And uh, taxi drivers have to, because um, they should. <laughs> and, and then we also believe that we need to invest in public trans transit. In New York, every taxi trip gets 50 cents to public transportation. Um, hopefully our drivers' revenues are gonna be going up now that they're owner operators. I think that's, that's a great way to incentivize more public transportation funding. Um, there's another one, side note too, is Uber um, drivers don't have to have business licenses. So if they actually had to get business licenses through the city, that's a huge revenue stream that with our budget deficit that we could be talking about. We're talking millions, possibly millions of dollars that the city could be seeing if we have made Uber drivers get business licenses like taxi drivers. And then of course, promote low carbon transportation. Um, right now, all taxis in San Diego are low to no emission and they have to be that way, um, they're required by law. Uber doesn't have to be. Our drivers are actually, um, I wish we could help say, well, we're actually creating our own taxi dispatch right now. It's gonna be a driver-run cooperative taxi dispatch called United Dispatch. Um, we're gonna have low to no emission vehicles. Our drivers just voted on the color of the car. They're gonna be like neon green. They really wanna promote environmentally friendly um, cars. So it's gonna be, we're actually a block down the street. So um, we're gonna launch that and we're excited to let you guys know about that. We're gonna be hiring people from the community to be able to run it, creating jobs, um, and giving people an ethical choice. Uh, our drivers are also um, lowering the meters to $2 a mile, which is um, which is down from $3. So they're taking a whole dollar off. So they, they get it, and that they're also gonna be doing mandatory customer service training. So with all that, I just wanna uh, leave you with this quote by Mayor Bill de Blasio. He said, no company's multi-billion dollar, and I think this leads into too, we're talking about getting money out of uh, politics, right? Um, no company's multi-billion dollar political war chest gives it a blank check to skirt vital protections and oversight. We want to let Exxon Mobil or Walmart and any, or any other corporate giant operate without basic rules in place to protect the public. And no number of lobbyists or ad campaigns will change that. So um, with that, I think this is a conversation that's ongoing. Um, and I'm just, I'm just very fortunate that I could come and educate you guys because I don't think a lot of people know about so that's all I have for now. <laughs>